Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Tara Jones Williamson, and today we're going to be talking about how to grow closer to God or Yah in 2024. All right, I have five tips for you, so make sure you watch to the end because you're not going to want to miss eat any one of them. They're all really, really good points. And uh, let's jump right in. You already know, please hit that like button, subscribe if you have not, and share this with somebody who you think can benefit from this. All right. The first thing that you should do in order to grow closer to God is to purchase a Bible that you love. In order to understand God, to understand who he is, his um, commandments, his needs his wants his desires for us you have to understand his word and get into his word and so the first step is to find a bible that you enjoy whether you go into a local christian bookstore or whether you go online like amazon or walmart or barnes and nobles or google whatever um, I personally suggest that most women use the NIV version that came out in 1984. So the NIV 1984 translation, and you can even Google that or YouTube, or not YouTube that, Google that or put it in Amazon and say, Holy Bible, um, NIV 1984, and some options will come up. The reason why I like the 1984 version is because it was one of the last versions to really be um for the most part translated correctly the ones after 1984 was really messed up you know you thought the 1900s messed up uh the bible after the 1980s it really got messed up and really got translated wrong things start being taken out words start getting misconstrued all of that good stuff so i would do the niv 1984 translation number two get get um active in a non-toxic bible teaching church so if you have patched church hurt sis i understand i get it right i empathize and sympathize with you but like i said in one of my reels you should have the resolve that nothing or no one should get you off your square when it comes to your jesus when it comes to your faith and your walk with god right i know it's hard but you got to remember that people in church are there and they are imperfect they are hurting too just like you would not be surprised if somebody walks into a hospital who's sick you shouldn't be surprised that somebody who's damaged somebody who's unhealed somebody who's toxic are in the church too okay and so what you have to do you have to ask the holy spirit to guard you and give you discernment from who's real and who's fake who's toxic who's non-toxic who can you be around who is a great influence and who is not right you gotta tap into that discernment and hear from the holy spirit as you are navigating in church okay just because people are in church do not mean they're they're living right just because they call themselves christians do not mean that they cannot damage you that is your responsibility to take control and take guard of yourself your heart your mind your soul all those things all right and so when you get into an active, non-toxic Bible teaching church, let's focus on attending Sunday service. Let's focus on going to weekly Bible study. Let's focus on maybe serving, starting off serving in a ministry that you like, whether it's children's church, whether it's the food, whether it's you doing the social media, whether it's setting up and tear down, whatever that looks like. Maybe start with once a month, right? And then if you like it, if you like that church, if you like your serve team, start doing it a little bit more how you're being led by God okay but get involved make friends and again ask for discernment ask for wisdom who are non-toxic friends and who are toxic friends and stay away from the toxic ones all right number three create a daily schedule that reserves 30 minutes in the morning to complete a daily devotional now devotionals can be done based on topic or or it can be like in the Bible app. The Bible app is the most common one, the most popular, at least here in America, where you can get on and you can look for devotionals based on topic. Or you could do like read the Bible in 365 days and then it'll give you a couple of scriptures out the Old Testament and some out the New Testament to read and break down and get your ahas and have that time with God and asking God to reveal to you what he's saying, right? And then number four, I want you to pray and conversate with God in the morning and in the evening. Remember, you do not have to be 
a Bible scholar. You do not have to be a minister. You do not have to be a pastor, a reverend, a deacon, a bishop, a priest, a pope, or any of that in order to have a direct, enriched, lively, exciting relationship with Christ. Hear me on this. You do not have to go through your parents anymore. You do not have to go through your grandparents anymore. That is your responsibility to cultivate your relationship with God. It is nobody else's. And so he's waiting to hear your voice. He's waiting to hear from you. Gone are the days. If you're watching this, I challenge you to stop waiting on everybody to intercede on your behalf, calling everybody, asking them to pray with you. No, they should be paying, praying in agreement with you, but you need to be the one out of your own mouth asking God and declaring his word over your body, over your mind, over your spirit, over your finances, over your body, right? That is your responsibility. Put on your big girl panties and go to the father and establish a relationship with him and get what it is that you've been called to get into the kingdom of God, period. All right. So if you been hemming and hawing on that, this is your sign. And I should do another video on how to pray and how I break down prayer and what I do and all those different things. Let me know in the comment section if you are interested in that. All right. But uh, one thing I will say that a lot of people don't know, especially if you are new to, to the faith, is to always end your prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Right. The Bible says we only get through the father, but through the son. And so everything you ask for, ask for it in prayer and say in Jesus name. Amen. So that you know, and he know that you you acknowledge his son, Jesus Christ, and that you are through him. You have been born again, and he is your Messiah, your Savior. You are declaring and decreeing that because, again, you cannot get to the Father if you don't go through the Son. All right. And the last thing that I want to talk about is create a playlist for your favorite worship music. Girl, praise and worship is the opportunity for your heart to cry out and sing to God's heart. And of course, that's a little woo woo, you know, but that's how I look at it. So that is a very emotional time for me. It's a very intentional time for me. It's one of my favorite times of day when I am in praise and worship. Girl, I'll be in the middle of praise and worship while cleaning up and one of my kids will walk upstairs and they be like, this woman is crying again because my favorite worship and praise songs be keeping me in remembrance of what God has done for me and what he done brought me through and how good he is and how much he's helped me elevate my lifestyle and co-create with him and all these blessings that I'm walking in that were once just dreams and wishes and hopes and revelation and visions are now reality right and so that's why I love praise and worship because it keeps my heart it keeps my soul it keeps my spirit humble it keeps me focused on God it keeps me focused on praising him and worshiping him and there's like so many different times in the bible where it states how we are called and we were created to worship him we were created to exalt him and we shouldn't be letting the rocks cry out and all out praise him right we shouldn't be letting the animals the birds that are outside singing out praise us right not i'll praise him i'll praise us right and so with that in mind being intentional in the morning and in the evening at least putting on your praise and worship music in the car in the shower getting dressed and just having that time where you are just crying out to your lord and savior and just saying i thank you i worship you i lift you up you know singing all the words thinking about the own the own song you have in your own heart for him right that is just such a beautiful and intimate time and it should not be forsaken all right so those are my five tips for getting closer to god in 2024 please let me know if those have helped you and if you want to hear more like this let me know any um context suggestions you have and i will talk to you in my next video bye